<laughs> oh, that wasn't me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Elisa or Cesar. Yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening around the world. My name is Doug Brunke. I'm the founder and CEO of Global Chamber. This feels like a kind of like a casual coffee clutch kind of like meet at Starbucks when you can kind of conversation because of the holidays and everybody's busy and there's a lot we going do. on. I think you we'll see people <laughs> coming and going uh, as they can because everybody has too much to do right now. And here in Arizona, it actually rained this morning, like all through the night. I was like, what? like wondering what yeah. is going on? Like what's happening with the world? It's like, there's something happening on the roof. I don't know what it is. And it, it was <laughs> indeed a uh, rain, raindrops as, as those of you who haven't lived on the desert may not mm -hmm. relate to that, but it, it becomes kind of weird at times when it doesn't rain for months and then suddenly it does. Um, but one of the things, and, and Lainey was mentioning this earlier before we, we did the recording, like rain in the desert there was nothing with book authors at global chamber there was nothing you know and gloria and i i mean let her say more about it but at some point it started to like gain momentum that we could actually <laughs> do an event and do another event and pull people together and then the next thing you knew we had a list of book authors that we knew and we kept building on it. So we started with like five and seven and 10. And then, of course, once you're thinking about book authors, you're talking to people and it's like, oh, you wrote a book. Oh, great. Put them <laughs> on the list. Number 11. And then when people started like, you know, in our kind of business development, when we start to see book authors it's like, wow, hey, you're a book author, you know, maybe you should be <laughs> part of the book author conversation. And now there's around 100, you know, people wow. within Global Chamber. And there's a couple like superstar emeritus members that are extraordinary that we've some of whom have spoken this year. I'm sure some will have next year. But we went from nothing to really something and that's not global chamber it was you know we all we did was just kind of hang out with gloria <laughs> gloria you know had the either the idea or certainly the initiative and the passion to help people and to learn more about people and to give people a platform. And the next thing you know, something great happens. And so, Gloria, kudos to all that you've done. I'll turn you know things over to you and then however you'd like to structure the conversation. But thank you so much for what you've done to bring us here over the last two to three years to now have a handoff to uh, Dana Austin, who also is a superstar and is going to take it, I'm sure, to another level because of some of the things I heard you guys talking about already. So, Gloria, thank you for all that you do, and thank you for this. Well, thank you also, and I also want to mention that I am so grateful that this is recorded because a lot of times our time slots around the world don't work for everyone. But I do go on to the YouTube channel periodically, and I'm amazed at the number of people who set aside some time to watch some of these recordings. So these recordings are there forever, which is really great. But Doug, to be honest, I was just trying to figure out my fit in Global Chamber. And sometimes when you're a member of an organization and you can't find your fit, you create one. <laughs> <laughs> You know, my expertise is in the area of image etiquette and protocol, like Laney's is. Uh, so we're colleagues in that in that fashion. But I'm not trade and export. And so many times I would attend uh, Zooms, and it was like trade, it was export, and all these other arenas that I thought, how do I fit into that? So then, as I'm listening to people, every so often somebody would mention they'd written a book, and I've written at that point I'd written four. And I thought, oh, I'd write that down. I'd heard Lainey write down her book. And, and then there was Dwayne. Oh, I wrote down Lainey's book. And I started writing them down. And I thought, wait a minute. We can create a new area in Global Chamber called the author community. Now I have a fit. <laughs> Perfect. Honest to God, that is how it started. That was the original inspiration. And it just moved from there. And, you know, I've been overseeing it for like, what, into the third year now? And uh, in our conversation yesterday, I wanted to build a foundation that was the original goal uh, in a framework. And I wanted it to do around the word, one word, inspiration. Because I think that when people 
hear the inspiration behind why you wrote your particular book. And then they buy the book because they've been inspired to do so. As they read it, they feel a certain connection with that author because that author mentions some things in within the content that they can relate to. So, you know, that's that's really what I wanted to do. Going into 2024, which the last half of the segment you're going to learn more about, I knew that it needed something else. It needed um, uh, a different level so we can draw people in more of a workshop kind of level. So um, in going to, and I kind of had Dane in the back of my mind anyway in listening to her because she did such an amazing job last January as moderator. So she kind of was stuck there. And then I, I took the initiative and went to her Transitional Writers Conference in Puerto Rico in December. What a great decision. Oh, Dana, Dana, I'm wearing the earrings. She gave us all these beautiful little earrings as a gift. She's so generous. <laughs> and I wanted her to know that I'm wearing the earrings. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy Thank to you. see them. There, there, there's diamonds even there, maybe. Yeah, ever there, so are, small. there are little diamonds. She is a diamond. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and she just had so many things. I love her spontaneity. Um, it was eclectic. That's the best word I can give you. But that's what made it really, really special. But more than that, I experienced where she can take the author community. I knew that was going to be a good decision because she's got this 90 day program. I experienced from her other trainers, different segments of what she's, what she's thinking about. And we really do need to transition into uh, more workshops and more learning um, arenas, not just inspiration. We need to get beyond the inspiration and move into another area, which Dana is going to go over with you. But with this first half, what I want to do with the 12, hopefully they will start to pop in <laughs> more of them um moderators that we did have we had 12 moderators we had of course i am a moderator doug's a moderator dana was a moderator we also had Dwayne. i'm hoping he usually pops in uh we had alex let's see uh did i hear somebody okay um we had the professor and by the way professor roberto is in the hospital with covid for those of you who didn't know that and want to send him some wellness prayers that would be great we had Christopher, um, let's see who else we had, um, Christelle Damien's in Australia. We had Stephanie, um, Dana's sister, <laughs> and we had Sarita Jackson. And these were all great, but who we have, I see on the screen right now is Lainey. So right now I really want to take this first segment of this session to celebrate these moderators. And I'd like Lainey and Dana, certainly they were moderators. Shanker was a moderator too. Um, yeah. sorry, sorry, Shanker, <laughs> I see you there. And, and and Doug, and Jess, if you would not mind sharing your experience as a moderator with these authors, and I'd like to start with Lainey. Thank you, Gloria. I, I can't thank you enough personally as a, as a author as well as a moderator for having created this opportunity, not only to showcase my book selfishly, but really to find a community within the broader global chamber community of people who were off also authors. And I really love the opportunity to be a moderator because I got to know the people who were the panelists whenever I was a moderator in a way I wouldn't have otherwise. Talking to them before the program, sharing some backstories with them, getting to know a little bit more about them, and then helping them, I like to think, mm -hmm. present their story in a way that was easy for people who were online to engage with and understand. And we had really fascinating people. Who would think uh, Yanko Horvath, who is a financial advisor, and oh, I can't remember his name, who's a tax guy, and talked about taxes between the US and Canada. I mean, who would think those things would be really engaging, fascinating <laughs> books to hear about, to recognize how much we had to share with each other, sometimes in the form of a book. Anyway, Gloria, I can't thank you enough for getting us started. I'll thank you, Doug, too, for finally saying, yes, let's do it. <laughs> And Dana, I'm excited to hear about what you have planned for next year. And Shanker, uh, would you share your experience in working with the authors as moderator? You're mm -hmm. on mute. Hey, you're on mute. Unmute. 
<laughs> thank you, and uh, thank you, and thank you, Gloria, for uh, bringing this uh, one of the greatest opportunities, I would say, because I always dreamt of writing something, and I was allowed to say yes to that, and uh, me having started it and learned so much from all the you know, authors and the way forward and how people think and interact. I mean, it is such a compressed uh, set of uh, understanding in just one hour each time we did it. I had so many perspectives, which is unusual in its own way. And uh, Doug being there, I must really thank Doug for being so open about, uh, you know, allowing uh, you know, people who have an interest, people who have been there, done that with so much of experience all put together. That is an unusual opportunity to be able to take from wherever you are and go forward. And uh, one thing I uh, want to also acknowledge is that I was given the chance to be a moderator. And moderation is a very unique position because, you know, uh, most of the times one is talking about oneself, knowingly, unknowingly. And when you are given the chance of being a moderator, you try to see things from others' perspectives, and then you got to balance it on time and really be uh, listening to it in a way that you can acknowledge uh, what they are doing. And it kind of gives me a completely a 360 degree opportunity to learn and give and go forward. Uh, so much to talk, but uh, simply said, uh, thank you, Gloria, and thank you, Doug for putting it all together. I'm really excited, looking forward to it, because I think I have come to a place where I can really, you know, say that I am on the Authors Network and um, I look forward to doing all of that. So thanks. And Dana, we are excited to see how we will take it forward and congratulations for that. Thank you, Shanker. And I have to share with you as the moderation was taking place, I get this email from Shanker and he goes, well, I. I want to do this in India. I want to start a book club in India. <laughs> and I said, well, then why don't you just be a moderator for us? Do you remember that? <laughs> yes, of course. If you want to start That's something, well, just, just do it here first. <laughs> we'll go from there. Well, uh, and... well, I always thought I'm I'm going to do great things in India, but global chamber is global. You yeah. know, and global is good. And that's yeah. the best part of being you know, part of this family. So thank you. you know, nice yeah, to see you, Lenny. <laughs> And Doug, I'm going back to you because you know you're the um, CEO if of this global chamber, but you've also served moderator. So from serving as a moderator to these authors, share that experience. I wanted to first kind of recognize what Lainey said around the community in a community, and you you touched on this as well, uh, Gloria. Uh, you finding your way amongst these global tribers. And it actually relates to Shankar's experience too, like uh, wanting to start like something new and fresh wherever you are, but here's an opportunity within this fertile ground to be able to do something without, you know, scaling it up. Gloria, you set the stage for folks to be able to kind of tap in and build a community within a community within a community. You know, and and sometimes that's the way things work. You know, we uh, many times come up with an idea and we think we have to like blaze everything from scratch when if there's already a wheel, why not start with the wheel uh, and get, use the momentum of that wheel to be able to create uh, something bigger and or be very efficient and effective and in what you're doing so i i love the fact gloria that you created this fertile ground that laney and shankar have been able to leverage this for their purposes as well and i think undoubtedly other people for me um i think one of the most significant experiences out of all this and there have been many both on the moderation level and and listening I think the most memorable for me was the listening when I was very like ingrained in my head, walking through uh, Menlo Park, Palo Alto, listening to Susan Schultz talk about her story. And, and it inspired me to finally come up with the Global is Good book, which it looks like it's going to change the title, but at least the working <laughs> title is Global is Good. And that basic idea that, that it is 
but the way we would communicate it, the story that we would be telling and how we would build that story came out of Susan, something that Susan Schultz was talking about in all the different books. I, I have worked with Susan for maybe 15 years. Uh, she was running the Phoenix Committee on Foreign Relations for, I think, 18 or 19 years, close to 20 years. And I knew her that way. So I know, you know, she's very international. She knows a lot of people. She's been a member since the beginning of Global Chamber, but I had no knowledge at all of her books. I don't think. I think I knew that she wrote a book about boards, but it really wasn't on my radar screen yeah. until she spoke. And then she talked about not only that particular book, but all the books she's written and that she's ghostwritten. Uh, <laughs> and so it's what this forum has provided is an ability for people to share some of the really, truly great accomplishments they've been able to make in their life and then have others benefit from that. And so I benefited from Susan's story because she gave me an idea. Uh, and I've benefited because of you, Gloria, and putting putting that together. I think a third thing, and then I'll can let, let someone else speak, is that I've been really moved uh, at times by stories of of the the authors of getting their story out and and what it takes to be able to do that and now that you know Cesar and I are, are pulling that together you realize how that it's not a like a trivial thing it's not like a I don't know what Stephen King does it just kind of seems to flow out of him like sweat during a workout but <laughs> It's that's not a normal process, I don't think. And people have lives and they have other things that they're doing. So to carve out the time to be able to write a book, we now greater appreciate how much is involved. And in fact, when I was reading uh, President Obama's uh, book, um, his, his biography, uh, I think it's called A Promised Land. I should know the title of the book, right? But he talks about how his second book he was traveling as a senator around Africa <laughs> in between countries and he was in Djibouti and he sent the transcript to the publisher. You know, like he's he's traveling across Africa, meeting all these people. He's talking to like family members in Kenya that many of whom most of whom he's never met before, having an experience, an emotional experience. And yet. He's finding the time to carve out in the evenings writing his book. And I, I could relate to that story much more now that I've done that same struggle of carving out that time and finding the pattern to be able to, to write. And those are the things, Gloria, that this, this mechanism that you've created have, have created in me, in addition to being able, of course, to meet some extraordinary people, like what we had with the, the author of the Factfulness book, Hans Ressling's uh, daughter-in-law, and uh, people um, like, um, uh, and, and understanding the story behind uh, a kiss, bow, or shake hands, and Perry's story of, you know, how there's a book that I read the first one, you know, when I was going to Japan and that was so instrumental in my own thought process of trying to be a decent global person back in 1990. So 33 years ago, and then to now see what she's done with that platform mm -hmm. and create multiple avenues of revenue stream and to meet her and to be able to understand her mindset and really such a great person, in addition to being a person who's been able to, to develop all of this. It's, it's been a thrill. So those, Gloria, are some, some of my thoughts and maybe not so well organized, but certainly uh, felt from the heart. Okay. And I, I have one more thing I did, I did want to say, then I'm going to pass the baton over to Dana. Um, another reason I wanted to create this was to create, and I think the, the best word is community. And in Sometimes, you know, it's like being a professional speaker or an author, whatever the category. It can be lonely out there. 
because you're in this one mode. You're, you're a professional speaker. You go from this client to that client, that client, but you're not in one place long enough to really build relationships. And authors are the same way in a lot of ways. We write our books, we put them out there. We have our book signings and we have all those great things and back of the room sales, which that's kind of gone to the wayside a little bit, that little thing. Um, doing back of, the, back of the room sales during the speech, speech engagement. But then when it's done, it's like, now what? You know, you're like, duh. <laughs> and I wanted to see a community grow. And part of that community was to get authors connecting with authors. Um, some authors have, um, well, Lainey, for example, has a partner when she wrote her book. And I want to encourage that kind of thing. And so what I want to say now is that I decide, I walk my talk. And when I'm going to talk about building a community, I'm going to build one too with, with one of my own books. So I deviated from the image etiquette and protocol world, which is what I'd known for over 30 years during COVID, because I felt like I need to kind of switch gears a little bit. I did a lot of reflection. And out of that reflection came a journal. I said, nah, I can't find the exact journal that I want, the one that covers the things that I want to cover and the things that I want to say. So I decided, well, I'm an author. Why can't I just write one? I'll write one for me and maybe other people will like it too. <laughs> and that's what I did. And it went really well. So I just did my second journal. It will be uploaded this week. I was told last night it's going to be uploaded. It's ready to go. But this particular journal is different because one of the feedbacks I got is I did a mindfulness and health watch journal. I got very curious during COVID about all this chatter about mindfulness. What exactly is this thing, mindfulness? I mean, I know it, but then I don't know it. So I watched a lot of YouTube and trying to figure it out. And then I wrote the first journal based on mindfulness as best I knew it. I'm not the expert on it, just what my interpretation of it was. And then some of the feedback I got, which was great, but some of it was, well, Gloria, I bought your book on mindfulness, but I don't get it. <laughs> and I thought, okay. <laughs> I understand. You don't get it. So this time I thought, okay, I'm going to go into my Global Chamber Author Network. This is what I encourage all of you to do. And I broke it down into seven categories. And I tried to find people within the Global Chamber Author Network that actually wrote a book maybe on that. For example, like um, I had one on um, Nicole, Nicole Turner, for example. When she talked, she talked about mindfulness. Um, uh, as it relates to affirmations. That's the word I was looking for. And I thought, oh, wait a minute, affirmation, that word's on the cover of her book. <laughs> so I contacted her and I said, would you do a page for me in my journal and help my reader understand what that's all about, how to do mindfulness? She wrote a kind of a story, actually, how she didn't believe in it. She thought it was kind of silly stuff until she figured out her own way of doing uh, affirmations, which I thought was absolutely perfect. And then I thought, wait a minute, Todd Cornell, that's another one of our authors. He wrote a book on mindfulness too. In fact, he has a whole chapter dedicated to understanding what that word means. So I contacted him and he gave me permission to use his mindfulness chapter from his book in, in my book. And then there's, and then I thought, okay, I need something else here. Um, Michael Quigley, oh, this one you'll love. <laughs> Michael Quigley, I thought, well, he wrote that holistic type book. So that falls into the realm of all this mindfulness. Somehow there's a fit there. So I thought I had about three categories left at that point. And I said, okay, Michael, I've got um, three categories left. I think I forgot what they were. Thank, uh, grateful, thankful, whatever they were. And I said, which one would you like to pick? Now, mind, mind you, he's young. Got that? He's very, very young. He picked wisdom. And I thought, you're not old enough. <laughs> and I talked to Mike. I said, wait a minute. That's fine. You want to do one on wisdom, a page on wisdom. But you're kind of young for that one. Are you supposed to have a lot of years? He says, but I have my idea, my interpretation of wisdom. I thought, okay, we'll go with it. So he did wisdom. And then I needed somebody for... um visualization because that's the one I struggle with the most is visualizing I would watch YouTube after YouTube on visualization I thought how come still not working okay so then I thought okay we've got one that is not only a he's innovative he's um written a lot of books and I know he probably uses that technique so I called Lon Safko over in California and I said Lon when you I know you're innovative, you're inventive, you've written all these books, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
Do you happen to use a technique called visualization when you do all this by any chance? He goes, well, of course, how else can you do it? Well, then you're going to write me a page on it. <laughs> and I says, and I told him what I was up to and he did. So, you know, this next journal that's going to be uploaded, it's mindfulness and um, health watch, but it's going to be called your inspire me journal. It's not your weekly inspire me journal, because that's really what I wanted to do. And I have all these people that came through for me and then I needed some endorsements on the back. So I reached out again um, to our author community and asked for uh, anybody who would mind reading part of it and endorsing it. And Lainey responded and Erica responded. Erica was going to be on, but she has some kind of a real estate deal that she had to close before she jumped onto this call. So she might pop in yet. Um, and they gave me, and I sent them about the first third, about 40 pages. And um, they read through it. So they got to see what Todd said, what Nicole said, what Lon said, what Michael said. They got to read all their stories and their um, uh, guidance, if you will, on how to use that particular technique to use it correctly. And they gave me amazing endorsements. So th this is what moving forward, this is what I'd like to see this author community continue doing. Reach out to each other, you know, build build a community within your own book, which is what I did. It's fun. It's totally fun to do that. Um, anyway, I wanted to say that it's going to be uploaded this week. It's going to be my last journal. I'm not doing any more journals because this one would take you, you can pick your year. You can be 2025 or you can be 2029 because it has all the calendars in there. You just check the month, one you're on. So that way you can go from March, 2025 to March, 2026. So it's a little bit more flexible that way. And then I'm going to get back to uh, my other work of the image etiquette and protocol work and get back to that. And I think I'll have it with a new set of eyes um, as I look into that. But this time um, we are going to change leadership. I think it's really going to be powerful and I'd like to pass the baton over to to Dana, and she will also announce what the January is going to look like. Dana. Yay. Wow, Gloria. Um, I've been thinking about what I was going to say because I knew you wanted us to speak as moderators, and then for me, taking receiving the baton from you. And uh, while I've given it quite a bit of thought, all I can say is that you just amaze us. You have amazed us. I know you will continue to. You said you mentioned something in sharing your story about acquiring different authors to contribute to your coming release. And one thing that stood out was target audience. <laughs> That's so key whenever we're writing, you know, defining why we're writing, who we're writing for and then sticking to that. And Doug mentioned about um, President Barack Obama traveling and then uploading his book. So there will be some tips that we're going to learn when I do a, I host a 90 days to manuscript masterclass. And so Gloria has learned more about that, share that with you. And I'm not going to attempt to do a 90 days masterclass and our global chamber series, but there'll be many things that each of us can contribute towards the workshops. So I'm going to share these slides with you and then try to keep my, um, my mind focused and my emotions under control, but it's been an incredible journey. Thank you, Gloria. Okay, I am sharing some slides and you should be able to see them now. Can you? Yes. Okay, great. So I wanted to just start off with a person I know as a connector and a mentor. And um, her word that she utilized at the Transformational Writers Conference in Puerto Rico was perseverance. And I don't think anything can summarize Gloria any better than those three words. Those three, because we've all said that in sharing your stories and how you got involved and how it inspired you. So she, yes, she's a connector. She is a mentor and she perseveres. And that to me is a great example from someone who I want to learn, emulate, and also apply some of the skill set that I have. Yes, Gloria founded the Global Chamber Author Series, which she mentioned the word um, inspiration. She inspires. And she goes, Dana, take it beyond that. So 
I'm going to share with you some of my goals and um, still plan to meet with other core team members. She is a multi-published author and she's still birthing another book this month. <laughs> Telling you, wait, I have to tell you this story. I won't share everything that happened in Vegas, um, Puerto Rico, Gloria. I'll just share what I can. Um, but on one evening, you know, there's all in this resort, there's always entertainment. And Gloria's energy is unwavering. I was like, I got to go to the room. I got to rest. And she's still going. And I'm telling you, she causes us to rise to the next level of excellence. For me, it requires a little rest. She just keeps going. She is a multi-published author, as I mentioned, coming out with her next book. She is an image etiquette protocol consultant. And believe you me, she showed up as such. She was on point. I'm giving you your kudos, Gloria. And um, in every way. And yes, yeah, she's run this author series for over three years. And we're going to continue it with the help of each and every one of you that are on. And then bringing new people on board as well. She's galvanized over 100 global chamber authors, bringing them together to partner. And by the way, what I didn't share with you, Gloria, um, two years ago, I used one of the global chamber author series, YouTubes, in between, like when we had commercial breaks, I just let it play. I'm like, these are the experts too. Um, and you inspire aspiring authors. So thank you for that. And I would like to share with you what um, the vision is for 2024. I've met with a few of the core team members. She's acknowledged the moderator. So this next slide is really gonna touch on that a little bit. So our core team member being Lainey Denslow, Alex Devereaux, Professor Anseth, Duane Canova, Doug Brunke, Schenker, Damadoran. And if, did I leave anyone else out? Because I know we had other people you suggested, but this has been the core, correct? Okay, so I'm looking forward to you all to continue to partner to take this beyond excellence, as she has said, and telling you, I know many of you know a lot about me because we've been on this journey together, but yes, I'm a multi-published author, Global Chamber Executive Director for Atlanta, Transformational Writers Academy Conference started that four years ago. Next year will be our fifth year, and then we spun off a nonprofit this year. And then we will continue in the spirit of excellence as Gloria has started and you all have supported. And then we're going to go beyond inspiration. This is what she wants us to do. This is what she wants us to do. And um, I weighed it all out. So after meeting with a few of the core members, and I plan to meet with a few of you, other of you um, individually, we'll set up some time, is um, this is the plan for 2024 thus far. And again, it's subject to change a bit because I want to incorporate everyone's um, input. But one of my favorite quotes, one of my absolute favorite quotes is by Stephen Covey. Start with the end in mind. Start with the end in mind. So when we were in Puerto Rico and we had ample opportunities to talk, laugh, connect, plan, think, project, um, I, can't, I just started thinking about the entire 12 months. You know, let's look at the entire 12 months. Let's plan it out. and But leave room for things to happen. So... Here are some new changes that's going to take place within the author series. And I believe Lainey may have suggested this to Gloria. And we'll discuss, you know, how that's what that's going to look like. So every other month, starting in the month of January, uh, we will have our Global Chamber author series as it stands now. Third Wednesday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Um, here are the dates for the um, entire year. So those six months. We'll still have the same format with the a moderator facilitator. We will have two authors featured instead of three, thus allowing us more time to engage, to, to, to connect, and to dialogue and get more um, greater meaning from bringing all these incredible authors together. And then for our, what we are adding is a global chamber workshop. And these will be the opposing months on the same Wednesday, but at various time, because the goal is to really attract and engage and connect more with people in other time zones um, like Shanker. So he doesn't have to stay up till 10 at night or midnight and, you know, um, and several other people in Japan and, and uh, other parts of the world. So the workshops will be that same Wednesday, but the time will vary. So we need to discuss that as a team um, and Alex suggested yesterday is that 
you know, he's looking at this entire vision for the Global Chamber Series from a start to finish, that these workshops would continue to um, augment, equip our writers, our new writers, aspiring authors even, um, so that they can start in this January. And by the time we get to December, which is the, which we culminate at our Transformational Writers Conference, and we'll certainly extend that invitation to all of the um, Global Chamber members and authors, um, but plan it that way so that you'll have the tools, additional tools to get it done. So one thing I'm going to touch on that Doug was mentioning was, was uh, about President Barack Obama uploading the book and traveling and writing. So I'll give you this one little tidbit. I shared it with our, our team in, in Puerto Rico. When I coach my writers, my authors, I suggest them doing it with a time management um, process called the Pomodoro Method. And the Pomodoro method is when you utilize and maximize 25 minutes, and then you take a five-minute break. And you do a series of four of those before you take a 15-minute break. And if you only have time to do one Pomodoro, do one Pomodoro, because you'll get more out of that 25 minutes, focused and fierce, than you would if you just sat down two hours, as oftentimes we try to do. And then we, you know, uh, we'll find reasons why we don't have that chunk of time, two hours, but we do have 25 minutes. All right. So those are some of the things that we're going to incorporate. Plus, you all have things you're going to want to uh, help facilitate workshops on. And I'd love to hear from you on that. And feel free to email me as well. Um, so the start to finish component will be us equipping anybody that listens live or re in recording on our YouTube page that they'll be able to follow that process and complete their journey, their book. And we're also going to um, leverage marketing. That's a big focus this year that Gloria mentioned there was a need. Professor Ansif has mentioned that. Alex has talked about that. We're going to be looking at AI um, as well as, uh, you know, writing, utilization of AI and not compromising quality or even plagiarism. So how can we use it and benefit in our writing? And then the last thing on this bullet is really increase our visibility. And, you know, you you all have done a great job with that. And what I've learned in the last two or three months from another organization is they're out there every single day. I thought, wow, that's a lot. So that's overwhelming even. Matter of fact, who wants to hear from us every single day about writing? But we will not be presenting in the form of writing only. You're gonna share some things that you learned, maybe read an excerpt from your book or tell the benefit of being a part of the author series, what have you gained that somebody else may want to be a part of and really pull in our young global leaders as well. And then um, in terms of measuring success, again, these are not all written in stone. We've got more things to add on, but we need to be able to measure the success as Gloria has been able to share. I've hosted 12 um, author series. We've had these many moderators and be able to look at the numbers on YouTube, but we really want to be able to um, pull those numbers to say, hey, we have this many starting, we've added new, uh, we've done so many books have been written, collaborations done, and then our Transformational Writers Conference, again, like I said, culminating the year, ending it. So that's the vision so far. I'd love to hear from you all based on what we've shared. Oh, I was waiting for the next slide. I was supposed to respond. <laughs> the next and final slide is our global chamber is to be a global community of authors connecting our experiences yeah. through books, workshops, and collaborations. Oh, I, I think this is all great. My goodness, I'm so excited. I'm going to learn so much, especially with the AI. I mean, there's a lot of things out there for authors that um, it's not what it used to be. Techniques that you've used in the past, might have worked in the past, aren't working so well anymore because there's so much social media, the AI, all this stuff that's out here. So if we can unravel that this next year, uh, piece by piece, I think that is going to be um, huge. Uh, Lainey, how do you feel? Or Doug? I, no, really, there's a lot of unraveling that needs to be done so they can we can restart. Yeah, I, I like the rhythm that you've laid out, Dana. And I particularly like the idea of adjusting the time so that it's convenient for everybody, at least some of the time. Mm -hmm. So a little more 
we inclusive in a different way. Absolutely. Inclusivity. Absolutely. Thank you, Lainey. And I think we have some people on this call that have not spoke yet that are just observing if we can reach out to them as well. I can't see who they are right now with this particular slide. Okay. Um, Elisa, we have her. We have um, Santosh. Well, let's get Santos because Elise left. She had to. She had a, a client call come in. Okay. Santosh, are you able to um, share your thoughts or have you been able to hear and see as well? If you care, if you care to um, just unmute yourself and we also have Terry. Terry or Santosh, if you have any comments, please go ahead. Santosh was on our LinkedIn audio yesterday, so I know he's around, but he, mm -hmm. he may have stepped away. Terry, are you there? Do you have any insights that you'd like to share? And if not, that's fine as well. Mm -hmm. No, I well, think what, I was just very inspired and just really loved what I heard yesterday, Dana, uh, what you guys have come up with in terms of a, um, a, a shift in how things will be presented next year. I think it's just it's it's the right time to go to two versus three authors to space out those conversations to every other month and i particularly love the action orientation and the facilitation of helping people more directly through the workshops you know it's one thing when we get an idea about something and be inspired to do something but yeah i want to know how barack obama well, could carve out those times and i thought pomodoro was a type of pizza so i'm i'm ready to learn you know about this 25 5 i've been doing 50 10 for most of my life and uh and i i think i've fallen out of the ability to do that because i can't think in our terms anymore so i love that 25 5 idea so so that that's really awesome awesome well think of pizza because they do use the tomato as a, a timer um but yes, the 25-5 really changes your writing and you can see your progress. Um, so we're looking forward. Lainey, I look forward to doing a one-on-one -on -one with you and also with Schenker. And then I'll reach out to Dwayne as well as Professor Ansif once he's you know, available and well um, and any other core members. And and January is already set and slated. Um when Gloria does things, she does it well. She ties it up nicely and gives it to me so I didn't have to panic going into 2024. So we're already nicely slated for that. And what we'll do is incorporate um, a marketing component or some other tips about writing in that so that it would really help move us forward. Now, Dana, I would be remiss. Dana, Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Excuse me for interrupting, but what's the date and time for January? While we're talking about January, I want to get it on the calendar. Yes, please. Um, it's January 17th and on it's Eastern time, 11. So you base that on your time. Got it. And then the next one would be March 20th. You would just want to kind of put that down. And then we've got May 15th. So those first three will, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to measure our metrics by the quarter, by the way. We'll see what our um, performance has been our in, in increasing in attendees and members quarterly. So we'll be able to give that feedback. And I would like to ask each of you that are on and those that are listening in the recording, whatever your other skill sets may be outside of writing that would help to augment this writer series. You might be really great with um, uh, advertising. You might be really great with keeping records and record retention and, and promoting whatever your other skill sets and your desires, please let's do this. Cause it's going to take all of us for it to work. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited for 2020. I'm excited for 2024 anyway, cause I just feel like it's going to be such a pivotal year for many of us that are just ready and looking forward to that. Yeah. Is, is Shanker still there? Maybe um, Shanker, if you would give us feedback on what you see so far. Yeah, uh, Dana, thanks again. Um, I find this Stephen Covey's line, I already had heard it, but when you said that today, it makes total sense for the book to be start to finish and whatever it takes to get us there. And I'm looking forward to doing that exactly. And I know that you have a very 
focused approach of uh, having the audience in the mind when you're writing. It's a very good uh, direction. Sometimes we might go off tangent. We must always know why we are writing and for whom we are writing and what's the message it kind of comes through. And once again, like uh, Doug mentioned, the 25-5 is a fantastic way to bring in, pull our resources and stay laser focused to be able to bring some output in that time period. Uh, excited again for the 2024 and looking forward to this whole process of the authorship. Thanks again. Yes, absolutely. And Shankar, be thinking about workshop topics that you might want to lead out on. And um, since we have up here, I'll share these slides with Gloria to send to the team. Um, think about those workshop months and time frames so we could at least, we want to represent each time zone. Absolutely. Let me share this story with you Thanks. all, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm, go ahead. Somebody was talking. No, I, I just said thank you to, yeah. You're welcome. Let me share this uh, story with you regarding some of my writers. We start day one, right? And a matter of fact, we start January 4th. That's when we do our next 90 days to manuscript. And the first thing on my agenda for them is, you know, we start off and to get it done in 12 weeks, we have to be really focused. But I ask them more in a discussion so it doesn't really feel like a lot of work. I have them make a commitment to themselves that they're going to finish the journey. That's number one. But our first thing we start off with is, you know, what genre of book they want to write. You're really getting them familiar with the various types of genre. Many people already are. And then I say, well, what do you think is going to want to, what do you think you're, this book is for? That's the second question I ask. And I'm always surprised when I at least get one or two people to go like, it's for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and I smile and I'm going, you know, well, well, let me let me burst this bubble really quick. Your book will never, ever, ever be for everybody, even though you think everybody should read it. You're going to have a target audience. You're going to look at the demographics. You're going to look at education. You're going to look at uh, gender. You're going to look at regions even, because that is really going to determine who you're writing for. And what, like you said too, um, Shanker, it's easier to stay on course when we're clear with, with the course and who we're writing for. It is. So I'm excited that that's going to be an aspect of what we do. And then stay on course. If you get off course, we, we are here. You have a community, a global community to help with accountability. So I thank each of you and, and, and certainly if anybody or Gloria had any more comments, Please share that before we wrap up. Yeah, I'm just curious. Um, is Cesar on this call? Um, I don't think so. Okay, no. I was just, you know, his comments might be good. You might announce what your lineup for January is. Yeah, did you want to do that? No, I have to go back that. in the email. I know Elise is going to be one mm -hmm. out of Austin, Texas. Gloria. Yeah, yeah. and then there's... Um, I, I, be, I don't know how to say the name. I B E H E B. How do you say? Oh, e yeah, eBay. Yeah, he's uh, he's amazing. He's a great author. Um, so I'm looking for. I'm glad he's speaking. That's great. Yeah. Yes. So that's our lineup for January. Um, I'm, I'm hoping also that we can have, you know, whenever you do something new for the year, you want a, a nice fresh look. So if you guys have a nice fresh look for us to be promoting mm -hmm. our um, Global Chamber series, like you go, oh, let's try this backdrop. Or let's do that. Let us know because we've got to get all of that to say sorry in advance. And we just want a nice fresh pop. Okay. So yeah. on that, Dana, I would, and I've already just emailed you and Elisa to get together uh, so that we have all of these dates on the calendar and maybe that's already done. But what I'd love to be able to see on your point there is that let's, why don't you talk to Elisa about creating a fresh, consistent look to this series? She's really good at that and let her know what we want to try to accomplish and you know, work with her to see um, what she can come up with so that we've got some level of consistency and freshness to the to the look all the way through the year. Sounds perfect. Yeah, and, awesome. and Doug, if, if I can just interrupt for a second, Doug, uh, Elise's name's kind of new to me. Can you, I, and I know she's doing things 
in place of Cesar or for Cesar. Can you give us a little background on her and who she is? Oh, it's just it's a it's she's a new employee at at Global Chamber. Her name is Elisa, E L I S A, and so all of the events, you know, she's handling all of the events. So you know, you've oh. been using everybody's been using Cesar, yeah. mostly for this. So Elisa's been doing that for several months, and so from now on, just direct things uh, there. Is she here in the Valley? Is she in Puerto Rico? Where is she? I think she's in, uh, she's right? in the world. She's in our world community, and she happens to be physically located in the Philippines. Oh, okay, good. Okay, it's good to know. She's been doing a fine job uh -huh. for months. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, just, I just didn't know who she was. I, I mean, I've seen her name over the months, but I didn't quite make that connection as who she is. Yep. That's uh, she's she's really our events person, and she from day one has done a really great job. Good to know. Awesome. So Elaine, um, Lainey and Shanker, if you just reach out to me, give me a time, a couple of dates that work for you and times, we can get it done before the end of the year. That would be nice. If not, we'll do it the first week in January. Uh, but what, what is it that uh, you're looking for that I can provide? I just want um, maybe 30 minutes where I can hear from you. What are some of your vision and what how oh, you okay. want to well, continue to contribute as a part of the core team? Yeah, because my book is going to be a workshop in itself. Uh, <laughs> because there are chapters that I want to give out to others, and I'm very keen to understand how this workshop is going to be and aligned with that. Awesome. But we'll talk about it in the half an hour you know, window. I would love to love to hear more. Love to hear more. Well, I want to say happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, and <laughs> Epiphany. On January 6th. I want to cover it all. Hopefully I did. <laughs> um, and blessings to each of you. It's been an incredible year and we're looking forward to greatness and wellness to everybody. Yes. And if we can have Doug do his famous, 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 famous summary. <laughs> End of the session summary, Doug. Oh, there it's famous now. Huh? Yeah, that's, famous. That's, <laughs> you may not. Oh, very, very good. Well, no, I, I just want to thank uh, Dana uh, for that reconfiguring of what we've got. It's really just kind of building it into the next phase. Um, and uh, Gloria, what you've been able to set the stage with with this platform is just phenomenal. And I think we've heard all of all of us have heard today how all of us have been positively impacted from that. I would say one question I would have then for Gloria, how can how can we help you in the next phase? It sounds like you've got some ideas of how you're going to be going forward with the, the passing of your father. You've been through a lot yourself. Are you kind of in a, a life moment where you're making a, any kind of transition that we can help with? Or is there, as you kind of navigate, obviously stay in touch. And I know I got your message about renewing in the first week of January. So thank you very much for that. How can we help you in the next phase? I presume part of, part of what you'll be doing is certainly staying involved here. Uh, is there anything else that we can do to help? Well, I'm always going to be in the background for support for Dana. Always. If there's something she needs and I'm going to be there for her. Mm -hmm. If something comes up and she can't uh, be there that day, I'll be her backup. You know, always yeah. be there. But I've been through a lot these last two or three years. Maybe that's why I was able yeah. to do this so well, because um, I, uh, my father gifted me with this ability to, as Dana said, persevere. But one of the things I learned from my father, and I didn't realize how much I was like him <laughs> until I started really taking care of him in his last days, is that when something is bothering him, you have two choices when something is bothering you, no matter, you know, whatever it is. You can either wallow in sadness or you can find a project and bury yourself in it and make something good come out of it. So I prefer to do the second one. So a lot of what I did was me bypassing my own issues, my own sadness, my own struggles that I was dealing with and finding that light, finding that way to find the positiveness in the day by staying involved in something very, very healthy and very positive. And that's what this was. So sometimes that's how we do it. You know, when you listen to so uh, songwriters, and singers, I watch um, the, uh, the American Idol or The Voice or something like that, and you hear their stories, and or you hear famous artists that you have to that you recognize, like Adele, for example. A mm -hmm. lot of their songs are written out of pain, mm -hmm. and when they do it out of pain, it benefits the world. And not that every song needs to be written out of pain; there needs to be the happy ones too. 
but but Doug, that's what I've been doing. And that's how this all came about. But going into 2024, there's not going to be any more pain. <laughs> it's going to be my turning point year because I'm going to make that happen. It will definitely be a turning point year. And I, ex I expect to be really, really busy back on the circuit again. And that's why kind of that's another reason why I kind of had to um, uh, pass, pass the baton a little bit to free up more of my time. But I'll always be there. I'll be in the background. <laughs> but we've yes. got your back. Thanks for all that you've done. Uh, yeah. Dana, any last any last comment before we close the room? Well, I looked at my desk and this little sign caught my eye. So I want to remind each of you. Caution. Hold on. Rock star at work. Each of you are a rock star. <laughs> I like that. Someone gave me that years ago. So you are a rock star. Let's rock on into 2024. Okay. Finish 23 on a high note. Thank you. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank Gloria. you. Thanks, Thank Doug. you, Gloria. Bye, Take care, everybody. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. And Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah.